Hello, I'm Mark Littlefield, Director of System Products at Elma Electronic, and welcome to part one of our video series on the SOSA Technical Standard. In this series, we will be examining various aspects of the TOSA technical standard, including how integrators can best make use of the various elements that make up the standard. In this first installment, we will start with a brief overview of the technical standard before diving into the OpenVPX plugin card elements found within the standard. The SOSA Consortium is an organization formed in 2017 and made up of representatives from government, industry, and academia with the goal of creating a modular, open technical standard for defense sensor platforms. As it says here, the SOSA technical standard defines a reference or objective architecture with software, hardware, and electrical mechanical aspects that support real-time sensing solutions. It is aligned with Vita's OpenVPX and other standards, and the objectives governed by directives like CMOS, HOST, MORA, and others. The standard is driven by the needs of high-performance sensor systems such as EOIR, EW, radar, SIGINT, communications, and most recently, directed energy. However, other rugged embedded applications requiring high-performance stream computing can also make use of what the standard brings to the market. The fundamental goals of the standard are quite straightforward. To develop a reference architecture that is open, vendor-neutral, standards based and harmonized with existing standards or standards under development, aligned with service objectives, cost-effective, and lastly is adaptable or that enables rapid alignment to changing requirements or technology refreshes. The unspoken goal is to provide an open architecture where hardware or software components from different suppliers can quickly integrate and just work. The standard calls out a ton of attributes and principles which guide its development, but we're going to highlight a few key ones that drive much of the hardware element definition. Interoperability, plug and play ability, upgradeability and interchangeability, and lastly, defined interfaces both physical and logical. As we review the hardware elements in detail, it'll become clear how these attributes and principles guided the formation of the standard. Looking at the overall composition of the technical standard, we see that any particular component that aligns with the standard will fall into a particular category. For this video, we will be focusing on hardware elements. Future videos will examine other elements of the SOSA taxonomy. Turning attention to the 3U OpenVPX portions of the technical standard, we find a set of slot profiles for payloads, switches, and PNT clock cards. At first glance, this seems like a broad array of options and too much for an open standard. However, when compared to the 37 3U payload, peripheral and storage profiles, and the 24 switch profiles in Vita 65, you will see that SOSA is actually quite a bit more narrowly defined. In fact, the slot profiles in SOSA were all very carefully crafted to solve specific problems in SOSA-like systems. Starting in the upper left corner, we find the Compute Intensive SBC, or Primary Payload Profile. This is the workhorse of the SOSA profiles, containing a large eight-lane expansion plane, along with an aperture for blind mate optical or coaxial connectivity. Moving to the right, we have the secondary payload profile, which increases the expansion plane to 16 lanes while shrinking the blind mate aperture to half size. The payload profile on the top right is the IO Intensive SBC profile. This is your typical single board computer with ports for video, USB, storage, serial, GPIO, and mezzanine mapped IO pins, none of which are found on the compute intensive profiles. On the bottom row, we find the three switch profiles. The first being an eight data plane and eight control plane switch. The second profile divides the data plane and control plane into two separate domains separated by a ground. And the third is a dual domain switch with an aperture for optical connectivity. A recent addition to the standard is the high density switch. This is not an OpenVPX profile. It is, in fact, based on Vita 91, which defines a higher density connector allowing for more ports per slot. There are five HD switch profiles defined in the technical standard with various combinations of data plane, control plane, and expansion plane ports. 
Rounding out the three U profiles are three specialty profiles. The first is a radio clock profile, which contains multiple ports for radial ref clock and aux clock, in addition to the aperture for receiving GPS or other high-precision time sources. Next is an RF switch with a large, double-sized aperture for coaxial connections. The last is the only slot profile that contains user-defined pins. The external I.O. profile was included in the technical standard to allow for a way to bring large numbers of discrete signals into a system. Some systems, most notably legacy aircraft, have a large number of discrete signals, so this profile was created to accommodate that. SOSA restricts how these pins can be used, however, explicitly prohibiting them from being routed to other slots in the SOSA backplane to prevent the profile from being misused as a vendor-specific profile. Turning to 6U, we find a more constrained set of profiles, with three payload profiles containing different mixes of apertures, expansion lanes, and mezzanine map pins, a single switch profile, and an external I.O. profile similar to 3U. Looking more closely at the primary payload and I.O. intensive 3U profiles, we see certain commonality as well as the differences between the two profiles. We see that both have data plane, control plane, and expansion plane ports, although of different sizes and counts. However, looking at the payload profile, we see the previously mentioned aperture for blind mate optical and coaxial modules. While the IO intensive profile has pins for mezzanine mapped IO. With a limited number of pins to work with in 3U, it was important to optimize functionality for specific types of slots. For instance, it is natural for a single board computer to have lots of standard I.O. and to host I.O. mezzanine cards, while a receiver or transceiver may have no need for these ports, but would require multiple coaxial connections. This concludes part one of our video series on the SOSA technical standard. In future episodes, we will examine how these slot profiles can be connected to form systems, as well as other aspects of the technical standard, including system management and SOSA modules. Thank you for joining us, and please be sure to leave your comments. I'm Mark Littlefield.